you start off the day with some amount of willpower. Let's say this much. Now, every time you take a decision, you end up using some of that willpower. But it is possible for you to use up all the willpower that you have. And after that, you have no more. So you end up doing silly things. Now, why does this happen and what can you do to improve your willpower? That is what we are talking about in today's video. Now, for this, I will introduce some characters to the story. So let's say that this Neo is your prefrontal cortex. Okay. So your PFC or Neo here has the job of long-term planning. So everything that you decide to do, which is good for you in the long term, your prefrontal cortex is responsible for. So let's say you're studying for an important exam. Your PFC is hard at work reading all the important things, but the other character is your limbic system. The limbic system will go after short term temptations, something that will make it feel good right now, it will chase after it or something that is scary right now, it will run away from it. So your prefrontal cortex is hard at work studying and your limbic system will keep coming and distracting it saying, oh, let's go do this or oh, let's run away from this. So the way to improve your willpower is to make your prefrontal cortex stronger so that it can say no to your limbic system. But in order for the PFC to learn all these skills, there has to be a mediator, somebody who communicates between the limbic and the PFC. And that is the cingulate cortex. The cingulate cortex is probably the most important part of the brain when it comes to discipline and willpower. So every time the limbic and the PFC don't agree with each other, the cingulate cortex decides whom to go with. And the beautiful thing is, the stronger your cingulate cortex, the easier it is for you to listen to your PFC. So these are the three main characters of your willpower story. The limbic system, which is distracting you, the PFC, which is trying to do your long-term plans and your cingulate cortex, which you need to make strong. So how do you know how much willpower you have? and how strong your cingulate cortex is. So you may have found that you have a lot more willpower when you're trying to do some things than others. So for example, if you want to go meet your friends, you are pretty determined. You have a lot of willpower that you've decided to go and so you will go but you may not have the same kind of willpower to go to the gym. So how can you know how much willpower do you have for doing something? There is a very simple equation to describe this. So the willpower that you need to do something depends on how difficult it is to do it, which is how much effort do you need to do that thing and inversely proportional to the reward that you can expect. Now, let me explain this because this looks like a complicated equation, but it's really useful to understand. The more effort it takes for you to do something, the more is the willpower required for you to do it. But the more the reward that you can expect from that thing, the less the willpower needed. So how do you hack this? How do you improve your willpower? Three steps. Number one is what I call as the dopamine hack. You have to turn whatever it is you are doing into a winnable game. Reduce the effort needed to achieve your target. And whenever you do achieve it, celebrate it. Set that positive feedback loop that yes, there is a reward at the end of it. It makes willpower easier. Number two is what I call the serotonin hack. Now serotonin helps to modulate dopamine. In other words, when dopamine makes you feel impulsive, like, oh, let me drop my work and go out for an ice cream. That is an impulsive thought. It is serotonin that calms dopamine down and says, no, let's sit and finish the task. Now, the more your serotonin levels, the easier it is for you to control your dopamine impulses. The way to improve your serotonin levels is a few easy steps. Improving your morning sunlight exposure, getting good sleep and getting enough movement in the day. So even 30 to 40 minutes of walking should help to do this. And finally, the most important step to improve willpower is what I call as the identity hack. And this directly strengthens your cingulate cortex. The way this works is when you are trying to calculate what is the reward you'll get, it depends on how much do you trust yourself to work hard because you know that a lot of good things in life take effort. But the reason that your brain thinks you will not get that reward is not just because the reward is hard to get. It is because your brain thinks you will not work hard enough to get it. So ironically, 
simply by doing hard things, you build a kind of self-trust loop where your brain thinks that now you are capable of doing hard things, which means that you will probably get that reward, which means you can now have more willpower. It ties back all the way to our original equation of how much willpower do you need. And the hard things that you do can be anything, anything that you define as hard for yourself. It could be climbing three floors of stairs instead of taking the lift. It could be lifting a heavy bag. It could be going for a walk when you don't really feel like it. Anything that you define as hard, simply by doing it, your brain changes your self-identity, builds more trust, makes your cingulate cortex stronger, which in turn helps your prefrontal cortex say no to your limbic system. And that is the basis of willpower. I hope this video helps you. If it did, let me know in the comments below and I will see you soon in the next one. Bye everyone. Take care.